So we're just waiting for my slides to load up. Um, title, Jackie Dunkley Bent. <laughs> Lovely, great. So, um, I, I would imagine that everybody in this room um, knows that we have birthed the National Maternity Review. Better Births is the uh, document that has been birthed from that National Maternity Review. So, just thinking about some of the feedback that we've had thus far... Um, whilst the review was gathering its evidence and around the time of its publication, this is a rehash of changing childbirth. We've done it, we've been there, we've worn the T-shirt, we've talked about it, we've pontificated about it, and we're still here now saying the same thing. I'm going to show you why this is different and why this will work. We have an opportunity to get this right for women and their families and for you and for us and for me. And so I'm going to show you how policy mandate equals practice and women and their families. So in March 2015, we had the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of NHS England, as a part of the NHS five-year forward view, another policy document, calling for a review of maternity services. And this was against the backdrop of some challenges with regard to supervision of midwifery at Morecambe Bay and in other areas of our health system where we were a little bit challenged with um, our outcomes, um, our safety outcomes. And I won't say anything more than that because I don't think it's fair. Um, but nevertheless, there was a call for a national maternity review by the top boss at NHS England. Um, and to get this right, we wanted an independent person to lead this review. And for those of you that are, are, for those of you that are old enough, if you think back to the early 1990s, um, when we birthed changing childbirth, Baroness Cumberledge also chaired um, that review as well. So Baroness Cumberledge has come back to help us to forge the way for maternity services to make sure that they're as good as they can be. The terms of reference were very tight, so that included an empirical evidence base, of course. And we also uh, wanted to ensure that we had a service that enabled care to be responsive to women's needs, which in the day job, you strive to do every day, all of the time, but the infrastructure isn't always right for sustainability. So the terms of reference were very tight. What I find very impressive about this review is that the, the, the review was informed by about 9,000 9, points of view from you, from users of the service and from anybody who felt they had a view about how maternity services should be run and indeed what women actually want. So I think that is, is the most impressive part of this whole review. The desktop research you can do, but seeking the views of people who should be contributing to how we shape maternity services is key and 9,000 is impressive. And we had publication in January, February, sorry. Um, so the, the vision, um, so I'm going to really rush through this quite quickly. The vision is a vision, I think, um, is, is, is a vision that you would want to provide within your respective place of work. It's a vision that many midwives doctors, allied health professionals aspire to do. We want to become safer. Yes, we're safe, but we need to be safer, more personalised, kinder, professional, access support that is centred on individual needs. Some of us do that. Some of us deploy great caseloading models. I'm not saying that we do, but there is variation in England, and there shouldn't be. And it's unwarranted variation, because depending on your postcode will determine your choice. And that's what we have at the moment. Better Births wants to get that right for women and their families. Also, there's something about you in our vision and staff in terms of being part of a well-led organisation. You should be working for good leaders, for leaders that are ahead of the game, for leaders that make it good for you, you make it good for women and their families. We need to invest in us, in you. 
So the, the vision then was um, made up of these um, uh, pictures that you see on the screen right now. So personalized care was a key request from women and from midwives. Care needs to be wrapped around the woman in terms of um, uh, where she wants the appointment, when she wants the appointment, what the infrastructure can provide for her in terms of that appointment, and other personalization agendas such as um, care plans, birth plans, etc. So whatever personalization means for that woman is what Better Births is encouraging us to do. Continuity of care are a no-brainer. The evidence supports continuity of care in terms of preterm birth and demonstrably demonstrates good outcomes. We, we know the narrative about reduced pain relief. We know the narrative about women are more likely to disclose sensitive information if, you, if they know you, if they've seen you more than once. And I know we've been here and we've done it, but this is just a little bit different. So the continuity agenda, safer care, we are breaking down these boundaries your exports and your imports, women that have antenatal care with you, birth with you, but go to another part of the geography for postnatal care, there's something about those boundaries that we've created over the years that needs to be broken down. The payment system, so for the leaders and the managers in the room, this is music to your ears. There is a piece of work that is currently happening to somewhat deconstruct and reconstruct so that services um, are paid for the work that they do. But just taking that one step further, um, what we're hoping to achieve is that women uh, have care that they need and want and the money follows them, not them following the money. So we'll expand that a little bit further as we go through these slides. So working across boundaries, what's key is that we're looking at um, a hub and spoke approach. So we're looking at whole system working, community hubs, where we can have large populations. So we're pulling in the commissioners, the CCGs who buy services from providers. We're joining together and we're ensuring that the STP footprints the sustainable and transformation footprints are ensuring that we ensure that we have um, groups of midwives with a conglomerate of hospitals that are able to provide um, joined up care for women in their families. So increasing the choice portfolio. So if you are in a situation where you live in a certain area where you haven't got the opportunity to have the choice of birthing in a in a birthing pool or indeed having a home birth, this system here will ensure that that's the case. So th this, is, this is the slide that I think is, is quite significant in terms of how we would deploy that model. So we'd be looking at uh, a local maternity system that brings together commissioners and providers it's a hub and spoke approach. We're looking at probably one and a half million in total. They will join together and will have something along the lines of an obstetric unit, a center of excellence um, where there's uh, great expertise, um, level three neonatal, um, tertiary referral centers. So we've really got a hub of excellence. But within that hub, We've got a community that can provide care that you've always been providing, previously Sure Start, currently children's centres, currently changing to something else. But don't lose hope about you know, your children's centre um, moving on to something that equals disappearing. We are in the, um, in the planning of this, we're thinking about children's centres actually being a part of that hub and spoke where women can access services that they should have been accessing all along, a multidisciplinary service, but that there's no variation in England. Every woman should have an opportunity to be able to access services in a coordinated way with continuity of carer. 
Shared clinical governance is key because there's a safety agenda here. So um, the community hub, just taking it one step further, acting as a one-stop shop so that if, if I were to go and engage in a particular area, I could have everything that I wanted at my fingertips without having to um, go on the internet, find a maternity service that provides the services that I would like to have. We are hoping that systems can come together to provide a one-stop shop. This is the vision and this is the ambition of Better Births. Also, there's something about our access and our referral pathways. And again, it's variable in different parts of England. And also, if we look at the Embrace, the latest Embrace report and its findings, we can see that whilst we're improving on our perinatal mortality and morbidity rate, we know that certain sections of our community, socioeconomically disadvantaged sections of our community, their pregnancies are 50% more likely to end in stillbirth. So whilst we're doing great things in parts of our health system in England, there needs to be a reduction in the unwarranted variability. It should be great for all, or at least good for all. A common thread that um, goes through the whole of the Better Births ambitions are the safety ambitions from the Secretary of State. So I mentioned just briefly our perinatal mortality and morbidity rate that is improving, but only improving for a certain group of our um, population. So our Secretary of State for Health has a national ambition. This has also been critiqued somewhat as well. But when we compare ourselves with other high-income countries, we are very much behind in terms of our... Um, our safety agenda and our outcomes for women and their families. So this is the ambition by 2030 um, to reduce um, death from brain injury, uh, stillbirth and uh, perinatal mortality and maternal mortality and a reduction by 20% by 2020. Very tall ambition but the Department of Health are helping you and helping us to achieve that and you'll see why shortly. We also have a publication this year. Some of you may well be aware with, of the Saving Lives Care Bundle, publication from um, NHS England earlier this year. Saving Lives Care Bundle is a collection of items that, if you implement, will improve the quality agenda, will improve the outcomes for women and their families. So if, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with that document, do have a look at it. Some of you have parts of it in your system already. So we're talking about carbon monoxide monitoring during the antenatal period and how many services have got carbon monoxide monitors. It varies in England and there shouldn't be variation. There is also in the care bundle an item related to um, uh, fetal movements. And what are we telling women and their families with regard to fetal movements? The variation is unacceptable. There's also something about growth and fetal surveillance and the old chestnut interpretation of CTGs. So if you haven't um, had a look at that document, do have a look at it. It drives some of the ambitions of better births in terms of safety, along with the ministerial ambition of reducing perinatal mortality. And also, you'll be pleased to know, when you do an investigation in the north of England, the standard will be as good or better or equal to that of the West the east and the south, or vice versa. When you do an investigation in the south of England, it will be as good as the north, the east, or the west. We must reduce this variation for the greater good. So why I started out by saying or sharing with you that this uh, policy document, Better Births, the report of the National Maternity Review, is different. It's different to changing childbirth because we are wrapping an infrastructure around implementation. No longer are we producing policy that sits on a shelf and gathers dust, or no longer are we producing policy whereby the really progressive units that are 
cash fat, if there is such a unit today. Um, but it's not just about those units, the Academic um, Health Science Centre, the units that are flying the flag at conferences and um, have a, a huge number of publications. It's not just about them. This is about everybody. And the, and the Better Births Transformation Programme, the implementation programme, will enable this to happen for all. So what's happening is we have um, work streams that will be delivering the recommendations of better births. And you can see them for yourselves. I've only highlighted number five because tucked within that work stream is the continuity of carer um, ambition to ensure that we have continuity of carer for all. Also tucked within that number five <laughs> is statutory supervision of midwifery and the new model of supervision of midwifery that will be emerging in the future. So all these work streams will be delivering the ambitions of better births and the work streams are held to account by a programme board at NHS England. So just moving on then to um, action action to improve. So putting our money where our mouth is, or indeed turning policy into practice for you, and more significantly for women in their families. We've had the launch of Saving Lives Care Bundle. We've got the local health economies, and these are the footprints for how care is deployed in your communities. This is how it's all carved up and something about how it's commissioned so that we have key priorities. The sustainability and transformation planning process means that when you go back to base and you look at your community, there are priorities from the CCG, from the people that buy your services to ensure that we get it right for mums and babies. We've had, in red, the launch of the maternity pioneers, which will test ways of improving choice and personalisation. Are any of you choice and personalisation pioneers? Okay, if, if you don't know, go back to base and ask, because some of you have put in bids to become choice and personalisation pioneers. You will be... Oh, great, we've got one there. Fantastic. Great, lovely. You, you are, so no pressure, but you will be setting the blueprint for the NHS in the future. You will be forging a way for everybody else to emulate. And that's what the, that's what the blueprints are all about. So um, there are seven up and down the country that will be leading the way for choice and personalisation. And there is something about a personalised budget that will be tested within one of those pioneer sites. The Transformation Programme Board, next bullet point down, that's important for you to be able to say to others, this is not just something that we are doing because we want to do it. This is something that will be held to account by a programme board. So each of those um, work streams that I shared with you on the previous slide, they have to demonstrate their commitment to meeting the ambition of better births. And that is a direct link straight up to the chief exec of the NHS. Um, maternity and midwives are on the... Are on the um, at the fore of most people's conversation at very senior levels. We've got an opportunity to make this work and we will get it right. Um, the next red highlighted, some of you, um, a raise of hands, have put in um, for to become an early adopter. I don't know whether there are any of those in the room. Great, so we've got one early adopter, a few early adopters in the room. Again, this is an expression of interest that's, an expression of interest that's gone out to you to ask you to bid for becoming an early adopter site. What does that mean in layman's terms? It means that you can pick up the recommendations and deploy them within your respective areas in an innovative way. You can trial um, joining together with other, other maternity units, if there's a standalone maternity unit um, or a freestanding maternity unit in the community and you haven't got one, this early adopter is about building a several hospitals, not building them literally, but several hospitals coming together and saying, can we use that um, freestanding 
uh, midwife-led unit. Can we use your MLU? You've got a fantastic water births facility. Can we use that? Joining together within a footprint, a geography, 500 um, to 1.5 million, or rather um, 1.5 million um, people in a population to be a part of that system so that we have choice for everybody. Does that make sense? It's the hub and spoke approach that many of you are familiar with anyway. But that launch of expression of interest is about you saying, we've got something good that we can showcase. We've got something we'd like to try in our respective area, and this is what we're going to do. So an exciting time. I do believe that the expressions of interest have closed. And to date, we have 19 applications from the 136 maternity units in England. And that's pretty impressive. Hopefully, through the judging process, the units that are demonstrating innovation in terms of how they can deploy the recommendations will be the new um, pioneer sites. So we will take the choice and personalization agenda and the early adopter agenda, see what you've come up with, and turn that into a blueprint for maternity services. The, the common theme are the recommendations in better births. And then, of course, we've got a series of um, roadshows. Just, just wanted to point out to you, just very quickly, I think I've missed a slide, is... Um, the, the, the safety aspect. So the, the, there are concerns. I think I mentioned um, the national ambition. I also mentioned the Saving Lives Care Bundle, but I didn't talk about, and I just want to um, commend this to you, there is a piece of work that is looking at rapid resolution and redress. So enabling um, uh, families who have being subject to avoidable harm, either through uh, morbidity, mortality, avoidable harm, to have rapid redress. And that will be a sum of money that would be allocated without them go, having to go through the rather protract, protracted processes of the courts. And also, there is a, that, that will link into better learning, quicker learning for the organisation and um, others. So that is being worked up at the moment. It, it's a Swedish model that England will be looking at with all seriousness in terms of can this work for us. This is about women in their families not having to go through long protracted legal processes. Not saying that they won't with rapid redress, but they may not. And the evidence suggests that if we turn something around fairly quickly, you mitigate against other things happening um, along the way. So that was just a point of note. And I think I'm going to stop there. I've skipped over a few slides, but um, just um, in the spirit of time, I do believe that we've got a plenary, and I think questions will be then. Um, but I just want, finally, I'd like to say to you that Better Births, the report of the National Maternity Review, just a quick recap, was birthed in February this year. If you are not a personalisation and choice pioneer, if you've missed the bidding process to become an early adopter, there are things that you can do back at base. Have a look at the recommendations and you'll know what I mean. The difference between decades ago, early 90s, and today is that NHS England and policy leads are wrapping a programme of support around maternity services so that implementation of policy can truly reflect in the experiences of women and their families. Thank you.